With the bright lights of primetime shining on Oregon, the Ducks deliver a second-half smackdown on the Cardinal. Stanford's luck ran out at Otten, and LaMichael and company ran away with the game. At Reeser, a must-win for the Beavers. Dennis Erickson and the Devils needed this one, too, and they fought the full 60 minutes. At the Coliseum, the Huskies try to kick a 14-year streak to the curb, and another Pac-10 unbeaten falls by the wayside. As the old saying goes, if you can't get one yard, you don't deserve to win the game. That surely applied at the Rose Bowl. The month of October is here. The conference race is just getting started, and so is this edition of Inside the Pack. Barter to his right. On step option, going to go right. Thomas going to keep it. Oh, what a fake touchdown, Thomas. What a fake touchdown, Thomas. Put the ball out like he was going to get rid of it and held on to it like it was a loaf of bread and brought it right back in. Darren Thomas and the Ducks are a perfect 5-0 and and with a dominating second half are now squarely in the mix in the race for the national title. And the big news on Sunday, Oregon has now jumped Boise State in the latest AP Top 25. The Ducks now up to number three behind Alabama and just points behind Ohio State, Boise at number four and TCU at number five, Arizona. Meanwhile, at number nine, they had the week off. Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside the Pack. Tom Ward here with you for the next 30 minutes, joined as always by Nick Krupke and our in-studio analyst this week, former Oregon defensive lineman Mark Schmidt. Schmidt, thanks for being here. Uh, the Absolutely. Ducks defense, they're a second half team. Clearly, uh, there's just something about that second half they love, isn't there? I, I, yeah, I definitely think they're a good second team. Uh, second half team. Uh, I think the platooning helps them out a lot and uh, they make great adjustments at halftime. Come out and play ball. Nice, hard, tough defense. Guys on both sides, offense and defense, talking about the wearing down of Stanford and you just mentioned that platooning. How big of a factor is that going to become over the second half of the season? I, I think it's going to be a huge factor for Oregon. I think they're going to have fresh, uh, fresh players. They're going to be able to fly around, play hard throughout the whole game and have confidence in their team that anybody can go out there and get the job done. And a lot of folks after this game talking about the intestinal fortitude of Chip Kelly, if you will, on that onside kick. How big of a momentum shifter was that? I'll tell you what, it was huge. I, sitting up in the stands, I was I was impressed with the guts that he had. Not only guts, but I think it's, it shows the confidence that he has in his team, and it was, it was a great play, great timing. Well, Nick, Oregon State, it was a must-win game. Dennis Erickson, the the Sun Devils, you know, they had, uh, you know, she had a good showing offensively against Oregon the week prior. Oregon State had its own demons, though, on third down. They did just enough to get the win. Certainly, and they've always had that bugaboo at least the last 10 or so years in that opener in the Pac-10, but you get enough things done. You get a career day out of Cats. A lot of other guys contributing when James Rogers could not go, and they're the only team in the FBS without a turnover. That's got to be something that's going to hopefully carry over the rest of the year, but a little more... Uh, chances to really put things away and again letting a team back in at the end. Yeah, you would think if they keep going with Ryan Katz having no turnovers, it's going to be a good thing. Still on third down though this week, 5 yeah. of 13 on offense. They gave up to ASU 7 of 16, so still a little more work to be done, but uh, let's get things rolling here and it was being billed as speed versus power, flashy and fast. Fourth ranked Oregon against forceful and robust number nine Stanford. The first ever meeting between the Ducks and Cardinal with both schools ranked in the top ten. Half of the Pac-10's unbeatens on display at Autzen on national TV. And the winner would remain in that discussion for a BCS national title shot. After an Oregon field goal in the opening drive, Stanford's Andrew Luck hooks up with Griff Whalen for the touchdown. Beats Talmadge Jackson on the 18-yarder at 7-3. Oregon fumbled the ensuing kickoff and Luck and company made the Ducks pay. Luck keeps it himself 10 yards and a big lick 14 to 3 Stanford after a Darren Thomas interception Stephen Taylor breaking tackles 44 yard score just like that Oregon down 21 to 3 the odds and faithful going what is going on but things change for the better in the second quarter DT with a speedy delivery via airmail. 29-yard TD to Jeff Mayo. Ducks down 11 at 21-10. The Ducks hit the Cardinal again. Chip Kelly calls the onside kick. Check it out. Rob Beard follows it and jumps on it. So Oregon's got the ball, and the Ducks turn it into points. LaMichael James from the five-yard line. Oregon now within four at 21-17. But back comes Luck, showing why he's one of the best in the country on play action. Look at this. Kobe Fleener all alone down the middle. 
36 yard score, make it 28 17. The Ducks did punch right back though. Thomas to the true freshman on the pump and go. Josh Huff, deep touchdown, 41 yards, 30 or 28 24. It was 31 24. Cardinal at the break. Third quarter, the Ducks begin to take control. Thomas with the great fake right there and cuts it inside for the six yard score. It's 31 all. Then the first Stanford turnover of the night. Luck to Chris Owusu, but he is knocked out by Javis Lewis. The ball is on the ground. Eddie Pleasant picks it up and goes 51 yards on the return. He gets forced out by Luck at the three. Luck showing his speed there. Next play, though, LaMike in for his second touchdown of the night. A three-yarder makes it 38-31 Oregon on top. We go to the fourth, the first snap of the quarter. Thomas to DJ Davis. Go, DJ. There's my DJ. He's in, 25 yards, six catch day for Davis, 45-31. Oregon had allowed just seven second half points all season. That stat remains intact as the Ducks shut out the Cardinal after halftime. Harris with the INT, that one in the back of the end zone to seal it. And Oregon, once again, with the nation watching, delivers a win to stay perfect. 52-31 the final. Oregon now has won 10 straight packed in games at Autzen. Thomas threw with 238 yards and ran for another 117. Yeah, he and the mic again just lethal. 31 carries, still 8.4 yards per tote. 257 yards will do that for you. 626 total yards of offense for Oregon. 518 for the Cardinal, but the big number, zero points for Stanford in the second half as Oregon, the first team all season to hold them scoreless in the red zone. They were 26 for 26 coming in. Well, Mark, want to talk about the Oregon defense here. And early on, it looked like that Stanford offense just kind of picked up right where they left off last year. No Toby Gearhart, but they still were able to run the ball with Taylor and other guys effectively. Absolutely. It seemed like they were a fine two machine running it up the up the gut, doing the play action pass to get the first downs when they needed to. Uh, but the adjustments that Oregon made uh, sure, sure played uh, in their favor the second half. And when you talk about the adjustments, we're seeing the first half still here. What was Oregon doing in the first half? I should say, what were they not doing in the first half that they began to then pick up on in the second half? Well, one, the platooning helped them and helped them stay fresh. And, and I think they established the line of scrimmage a lot better in the second half. In the first half, uh, their linebackers seemed like they were in tighter. And, they, and the, the adjustments they made in the second half, they moved their linebackers out, uh, moved their weekend out a little bit more, and were taking advantage of their speed a little bit against the, the strength of Stanford's offense. And we saw the Kenny Rose sack. They finally got to him finally. in the third quarter, and that was big. That was huge, huge play, huge turn of events for them. I, I think Kenny Rowe uh, used his speed finally, got on the edge and made a good swim move to get past that tackle. It also set it up to where uh, it, it built a little, a little bit of energy and uh, Zach Clark started getting in there a little bit as well as Brandon Bear. Well, and then also Darren Thomas, uh, you know, running for 117 yards in this one. So showing now that he can really be that dual threat that Oregon fans have been dreaming about since really since Dennis Dixon left and Masoli had it a little bit but that you know that ultimate weapon like Dennis Dixon was 